a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. WrestleMania 33 WrestleMania 33 was the 33rd annual WrestleMania professional wrestling pay-per-view event and WWE Network event produced by WWE. It took place on April 2, 2017 at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. WrestleMania 33 was a joint promotion event for the Raw and SmackDown brands, the first since WrestleMania 27 in 2011 as the brand split ended that year, but was reintroduced in July 2016. Thirteen matches were contested at the event, including three on the pre-show. For the first time since WrestleMania 29 in 2013, two world championships were contested, Raw's Universal Championship and SmackDown's WWE Championship. It marked the first time that the Universal Championship, SmackDown Women's Championship, and New Cruiserweight Championship were defended at WrestleMania. In the main event, Roman Reigns defeated The Undertaker in a no-holds-barred match, giving Undertaker his second loss at WrestleMania. In addition, Brock Lesnar defeated Goldberg to become the Universal Champion, thus becoming the first wrestler to win both the WWE Championship and Universal Championship, and Randy Orton defeated Bray Wyatt to win his ninth WWE Championship. The event also marked the surprise return of the Hardy Boys, who won the Raw Tag Team Championship. It was also the first WrestleMania to be on the air past midnight Eastern Time. WWE claimed an attendance of 75,245 for WrestleMania 33. This number has been disputed, as the AV Club wrote that it was almost certainly a fake number, as WWE has had a reputation for wildly inflating the attendance figure. As Vince McMahon once said on an investor's call, the fake number is for entertainment purposes. While wrestling journalist Dave Meltzer described it as, a total worked number even more than usual. Background WrestleMania is considered WWE's flagship event, having been described as the Super Bowl of sports entertainment. The event was the third to be held in the state of Florida, after 2008 and 2012. Tickets went on sale on November 18, 2016 with individual tickets costing $38 to $2,130. On October 31, 2016, traveling packages with accommodation ranging from $950 to $5,900 per person were sold. A two-hour pre-show preceded the main show, with the second hour broadcast simultaneously on USA Network. On February 20, 2017, the New Day of WWE's Raw brand were confirmed to be the hosts of WrestleMania 33. The four official theme songs for the event were, Greenlight, Like a Champion, Flame, and, Am I Savage? At the event, Pitbull performed, Options, with Stephen Marley before performing, Greenlight, with Flo Rider and Lunch Money Lewis. American singer Tanache performed, America the Beautiful, to kick off WrestleMania 33. The kickoff pre-show was broadcast on the WWE Network, WWE, com, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, and YouTube, with USA Network joining the live coverage for the second hour. Beginning at WrestleMania 32, a match between Big Show and NBA star Shaquille O'Neal had been teased from various media outlets, including WWE. Shaq was a surprise entrant in the 2016 Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal where he and Big Show faced off, but the other participants eliminated both of them. In July, at the 2016 Aspire Awards on the red carpet, Show and Shaq had another brief confrontation. A match was proposed for WrestleMania 33, which Shaq accepted. In January 2017, the two began calling each other out on social media, posting workout videos of themselves preparing for the potential match. Big Show then began to doubt Shaq's commitment to the match. By the end of February, Shaq said that it looked like the match was not going to happen, but he would still train just in case. The following week, Shaq said that discussions were back on between him and WWE. However, Big Show's announcement as a participant in the 2017 Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal indicated that the match was off. 
According to Dave Meltzer of Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the match was cancelled due to monetary reasons, as both parties could not agree on a deal. Big Show said that he really wanted to do the match, especially since this would probably be his last WrestleMania, and blamed Shaq's weight as a reason for why Shaq backed out. According to Dave Meltzer in January 2017, a WrestleMania 33 match between The Undertaker and John Cena was scrapped as Vince McMahon had a different vision for the show, and was thinking about the long-term picture not short-term storylines. The card consisted of 13 matches, including three on the WrestleMania kickoff pre-show, that resulted from scripted storylines, and had results predetermined by WWE on the Raw and SmackDown brands. Storylines were produced on WWE's weekly television shows, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, and 205 Live, the latter of which is Cruiserweight exclusive. The winner of the Royal Rumble match traditionally earns a World Championship match at WrestleMania. With the reintroduction of the brand extension in mid-2016, which resulted in two world titles in the promotion again, the Royal Rumble winner received a match for either Raw's Universal Championship or SmackDown's WWE Championship. Randy Orton won the 2017 Royal Rumble, the second in his career, and thereby earned a title match for his brand's WWE Championship. At Elimination Chamber on February 12, Orton's fellow Wyatt family member Bray Wyatt won the Elimination Chamber match to become the new WWE Champion and then retained the championship against John Cena and AJ Styles on the following SmackDown. Afterwards, Orton refused to fight Wyatt at WrestleMania due to his devotion to Wyatt. SmackDown general manager Daniel Bryan then scheduled a 10-man battle royal to find a new opponent for Wyatt at WrestleMania. The battle royal ended in a draw when both Styles and Luke Harper went over the top rope simultaneously. Styles then defeated Harper the following week to earn the title match, but at the conclusion of the episode, the Titan Tron showed Orton, at the Wyatt family compound, where Wyatt family's matriarch sister Abigail was buried. Orton declared that he had only joined the Wyatt family, to destroy them from the inside and set the compound ablaze, causing Wyatt to have a mental breakdown. As Orton had restated his intentions, to challenge Wyatt for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan and SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon decided that Orton would face Styles to decisively determine Wyatt's challenger for WrestleMania. On the March 7th episode of SmackDown, Orton defeated Styles. On the March 14th episode, Orton was interrupted by Wyatt, who claimed to now have the powers of Sister Abigail as he covered himself in her ashes. The following week, Harper warned Orton about Wyatt's new powers but said he would take out Wyatt on the next episode. Later, Orton was attacked backstage by followers of Wyatt, and Wyatt performed a ritual on Orton. On the final SmackDown before WrestleMania, after Wyatt defeated Harper, Orton appeared on the Titan Tron, and claimed to have destroyed the powers of Sister Abigail. At WrestleMania 20 in 2004, Goldberg defeated Brock Lesnar in their first match against each other. Both left the company after the event, but Lesnar returned in 2012. After 12 years, Goldberg returned in 2016 and immediately began a feud with Lesnar, thanks in part due to the WWE 2K17 video game, which featured Lesnar on the cover and Goldberg as the pre-order bonus. This culminated in a match at Survivor Series, in which Goldberg humiliated Lesnar by defeating him in 1 minute and 26 seconds. Both then competed in the Royal Rumble match, Lesnar entered at number 26 and dispatched of several other wrestlers before Goldberg came out at number 28, and once again humiliated Lesnar by quickly eliminating him from the match. The next night on Raw, Lesnar and Paul Heyman appeared, and challenged Goldberg to one final match at WrestleMania 33. The next week on Raw, Goldberg accepted Lesnar's challenge, and also challenged Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship at Fastlane. Lesnar and Heyman said in an interview with Michael Cole that if Goldberg won the Universal Championship, Lesnar would challenge him for the title at WrestleMania. Goldberg appeared the next week and promised that he would defeat Owens and become Universal Champion going into WrestleMania against Lesnar at Fastlane on March 5. 
Goldberg kept his promise and turned his WrestleMania match against Lesnar into a match for the Universal Championship. The next night on Raw, Lesnar confronted Goldberg and offered to shake his hand to congratulate him, but Goldberg refused. Heyman then exclaimed that at WrestleMania, Goldberg would be Brock's bitch, and Lesnar attacked Goldberg with an F5. The following week, Lesnar and Heyman gloated about Lesnar giving an F5 to Goldberg and Heyman said that Lesnar would have the greatest comeback in sports entertainment history at WrestleMania. On the final Raw before WrestleMania, Goldberg and Lesnar had one last confrontation where Goldberg executed a spear on Lesnar. In 2014, The Shield were involved in a rivalry with Evolution. After multiple losses to The Shield, Batista left the WWE out of anger thus disbanding Evolution. Triple H then revealed his Plan B, Seth Rollins joined Triple H's authority and attacked his Shield brothers, thus turning heel. Rollins was the forefront of the authority for over a year and won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 31, but was forced to vacate the title in November 2015 due to injury. He returned in mid-2016 was drafted to the Raw brand, and unsuccessfully faced Finn Balor for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. After Balor vacated the title due to injury, Rollins qualified for a fatal four-way elimination match for the vacant title, which included Big Cass, Roman Reigns, and Kevin Owens. During the match, a returning Triple H, who had not been seen since WrestleMania 32, aided Rollins in eliminating Reigns, but then turned on Rollins by attacking him with a pedigree, which allowed Kevin Owens to win the championship. Rollins did not address the incident until December, when he called out Triple H. On the January 23, 2017 episode of Raw, Rollins faced Sami Zayn. In the climax of the match, Triple H's music played, distracting Rollins and allowing Zayn to win Rollins' spot in the Royal Rumble match. At NXT TakeOver, San Antonio the day before the Royal Rumble, Rollins challenged Triple H to a match. Triple H came out, had Rollins escorted from the building by security, and called Rollins out on the January 30th episode of Raw as Rollins made his way to the ring. He was attacked by NXT's Samoa Joe, who made his main roster debut. Joe's attack on Rollins re-injured the same knee that had sidelined Rollins for six months. Rollin was estimated to be out of action for up to eight weeks. On the February 27th episode of Raw, Rollins addressed the status of his injury and said that it was unlikely that he would be at WrestleMania 33. Triple H came out with Joe and warned Rollins not to come to WrestleMania. Rollins then declared that he would be at WrestleMania. The following week, videos of Rollins' rehabilitation were shown and Triple H said that Rollins was ignorant for going against doctor's advice and trying to compete at WrestleMania. The next week, Triple H got into an altercation with Raw General Manager Mick Foley, after which Rollins came down, dropped his crutch, and attacked Triple H. However, Triple H recovered and attacked Rollins' knee. On the March 20th episode, Foley was fired as Raw general manager for his actions, and Rollins' physical therapist Kevin Wilkes said that Rollins should not compete at WrestleMania. Triple H later challenged Rollins to a non-sanctioned match, which would forbid Rollins from suing the WWE if he were to get injured again. The following week, Rollins signed the contract, thus making the match official, and he brawled with Triple H. At the Royal Rumble, the Undertaker competed in the Royal Rumble match, entering at number 29, and was eliminated by the number 30 entrant, Roman Reigns. In the ensuing stare-down, Reigns exclaimed, This is my yard now, a claim Undertaker had made for many years. On the March 6 episode of Raw, Braun Strowman, who had lost to Reigns at Fast Lane, called out Reigns, but instead, The Undertaker appeared and stared down Strowman until Strowman left the ring. Reigns then came out and reiterated that WWE was his yard now. After a stare down, The Undertaker attacked Reigns with a choke slam. A match between the two at WrestleMania 33 was confirmed the following week. Later on Raw, The Undertaker's gong sounded during Reigns' match against Jinder Mahal. Reigns was distracted, but nevertheless defeated Mahal. When Reigns called out The Undertaker after the match, Shawn Michaels came out instead to give Reigns advice about The Undertaker. Reigns said that he appreciated the advice, 
but said that he would retire The Undertaker just as Undertaker had retired Michaels at WrestleMania 26. The following week, during Reigns' rematch with Strowman, The Undertaker attacked Strowman with a chokeslam, but was surprised by Reigns with a spear. When Reigns had left, Undertaker sat up and taunted Reigns with his throat slash gesture. On the final Raw before WrestleMania, The Undertaker stated that the graveyard would be Reigns' yard after WrestleMania. At the Royal Rumble, AJ Styles lost the WWE Championship to John Cena. Styles was immediately entered into the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, but SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon also promised Styles that he would get a one-on-one -on -one rematch for the title if he did not win the title back at the pay-per-view. At Elimination Chamber, Bray Wyatt eliminated both Cena and Styles to win the championship. Cena then immediately invoked his rematch clause, but Styles intervened, stating he should get his first. SmackDown general manager Daniel Bryan then scheduled a triple threat match for the WWE Championship, where Wyatt retained. Randy Orton then refused his right as the Royal Rumble winner to face Wyatt for the title at WrestleMania 33. So Bryan scheduled a 10-man battle royal to determine a new number one contender. Styles was entered into the battle royal which ended in a draw between him and Luke Harper. The two faced each other in a number one contenders match the following week. Styles pinned Harper, but the referee did not see Harper's foot on the rope. Shane came out and restarted the match, which angered Styles, even though he would defeat Harper once again. At the conclusion of the show, Orton reclaimed his right to face Wyatt at WrestleMania. Brian and Shane decided that Styles would have to compete in another number one contenders match, this time against Orton, who won. After the show, an angered Styles got into a heated argument backstage with Shane. The following week, an irate Styles said that he was tired of Brian and Shane. He said, because of them, he did not have a match at WrestleMania, but Orton, who committed arson, did. Later backstage, Styles attacked Shane and threw him through a car window. Styles was subsequently fired by Brian, but at the end of the show, an injured Shane challenged Styles to a match at WrestleMania, which Styles accepted. At the end of the following week's episode, Shane called out Styles and the two brawled, which ended with Shane performing a leap of faith on Styles through the broadcast table. The following week, the two had a contract signing to make the match official and the two traded barbs. In mid-2016, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens began teaming and assisting each other. Jericho played a part in Owens winning the vacant WWE Universal Championship, which ultimately led to them becoming best friends. Jericho then assisted Owens in retaining the Universal title against Seth Rollins at Clash of Champions. And again at Hell in a Cell, the two were then made co-captains of Team Raw's men's team at Survivor Series, but ultimately lost to Team SmackDown. On the following episode of Raw, tensions were high as Jericho was about to blame Owens for using the list of Jericho as a weapon. Owens defended himself, stating that he was trying to protect Jericho from being eliminated. The two then agreed that it was Rollins and Roman Reigns' fault for the team's loss. Rollins then faced Owens for the Universal title, but Jericho again interfered. The following week, Reigns challenged Owens for the Universal title, but questioned Owens' ability to win a match without Jericho. Owens declared that he did not need Jericho, and the match was scheduled for Roadblock, end of the line. At the event, Jericho seemingly turned on Owens by attacking him during Owens' title match, which was revealed to be Jericho's plan so that Owens would win and retain the title. The two then challenged Reigns for his United States Championship in the following weeks and Jericho ultimately won the title. Reigns received a rematch for the title, but lost due to interference from Owens. At the Royal Rumble, Reigns again faced Owens for the Universal title, where Jericho was suspended above the ring inside of a shark cage. Despite this, Owens retained due to interference from Braun Strowman. Jericho, who hinted at wanting to face Owens in a title-for-title -title match at WrestleMania 33, accepted Goldberg's challenge on Owens' behalf for the Universal title at Fastlane, which was made official to the dismay of Owens. Jericho then held a festival of friendship for Owens, who turned on Jericho and brutally attacked him. In retaliation, Jericho cost Owens his match and Universal Championship at Fastlane. The following night on Raw, Jericho said that he screwed Owens. 
for betraying him and then demanded an answer as to why Owens betrayed him. Owens said that they were never actually friends, and that he only used Jericho who became useless to him after Jericho accepted Goldberg's challenge on his behalf. Jericho then challenged Owens to a match at WrestleMania, which Owens accepted only if it were for the United States Championship, and Jericho agreed. Owens said he would eventually get a rematch for the Universal title, but he first wanted to take the United States title from Jericho as Jericho took his title from him. On the March 20th episode, on Jericho's highlight reel, Jericho revealed the real Kevin Owens, who attacked Jericho from behind and destroyed the list of Jericho. The following week, Owens faced Sami Zayn in a no disqualification match, where if Zayn lost, he would be fired. During the match, Samoa Joe, who had been feuding with Zayn, attempted to interfere and help Owens win, but Jericho appeared, stopped Joe, and helped Zayn win. Jericho then brought out a new list and added Owens' name to it. At Elimination Chamber, Nikki Bella and Natalia had a backstage confrontation that led to Natalia shoving Nikki into Marie's. Later that night, The Miz attempted to eliminate John Cena from the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match only for Miz to get eliminated by Cena. On the February 21st episode of SmackDown, Nikki and Natalia's Falls Count Anywhere match led to the backstage area where Natalia again shoved Nikki into Marie's, who retaliated by attacking Nikki with a lead pipe, thus costing her the match. In that episode's main event, the same incident between Cena and Miz happened in the WWE Championship No. 1 Contenders Battle Royal, but this time, Miz returned and caused Cena's elimination. Cena was then the guest on Miz TV where Miz criticized Cena for being a hypocrite. As Cena was basically doing the same thing that he himself had criticized The Rock for doing, leaving the WWE and going to Hollywood. Miz said that he works as hard as Cena, but does not get the same opportunities, and he eliminated Cena to prevent him from going to WrestleMania 33 and wanted Cena to know what he felt when Cena defeated him for the WWE Championship back in 2011. Miz also said that Cena gets what he wants, but Cena said if that were true, he would be facing The Undertaker. Cena then criticized Miz for copying other people's gimmicks and moves, which caused Marie's to slap Cena for insulting her husband. Nikki then came out and Marie's and Miz retreated. The following week, the Miz and Marie's attacked Cena and Nikki after the latter two's match against James Ellsworth and Carmella. The Miz said he was tired of Cena's lies and said his relationship with Nikki was also a lie. Afterwards on Talking Smack, the Miz and Marie's said that Nikki was in her current position because of her relationship with Cena and that Nikki was jealous of them because Cena would not marry Nikki. The following week, Tmiz and Marie's continued their insults against Cena and Nikki and the two came out and chased Miz and Marie's out of the ring. SmackDown general manager Daniel Bryan then came out and said that since he could not fight the Miz, who had been insulting him for several months, both the Miz and Marie's would face Cena and Nikki at WrestleMania. Maris's last match was in 2011. The Miz and Marie's then made fun of Cena and Nikki's reality show Total Bellas by impersonating them in unaired footage. On March 27, Cena was a guest host on NBC's Today and revealed whether Manal Roker is the guest ring announcer for the match. On the final SmackDown before WrestleMania, more unaired footage from Total Bellas was shown. The Miz and Marie's then threw more insults at Cena and Nikki, including Cena not wanting to have kids. Cena retaliated and asked how many kids Miz and Marie's had. Cena said that although he takes time off to make movies, he comes back to WWE when he is done, just as The Miz and other WWE superstars have done before. Cena called Marie's a waste of a paycheck as she does not do much on the show, and that she was only back in the WWE because Miz begged for it. Cena then said that he and Nikki would destroy Miz and Marie's at WrestleMania. At Roadblock, end of the line, Charlotte Flair defeated Sasha Banks to win her record fourth Raw Women's Championship, ending their long feud and, as per a post-event stipulation, as long as one of them were champion, the other could not challenge for the title. Charlotte then began a feud with Bayley, which resulted in a championship match at the Royal Rumble, where Charlotte retained. Also during this time, Banks entered into a feud with Nia Jax, who defeated Banks on the Royal Rumble pre-show. The next night on Raw, Bailey pinned Charlotte in a six-person mixed tag team match. 
thus granting her a rematch for the title on the February 13 episode of Raw, where she defeated Charlotte to become the new Raw Women's Champion. Thanks to help from Banks, the following week, Raw Commissioner Stephanie McMahon asked Bailey to relinquish her title due to Banks' interference, but Bailey refused and Charlotte invoked her championship rematch for Fast Lane, which saw Bailey retain after Banks, who had just defeated Jax earlier at Fast Lane, again interfered, which subsequently ended Charlotte's undefeated streak in singles matches at pay-per-view events. The following night on Raw, Banks declared that she and Bailey should face off for the title at WrestleMania 33 as it was a dream of theirs to face each other at the event. Charlotte came out and demanded that she should have a rematch due to Banks' interference and said that Banks interfered due to the roadblock stipulation. Raw general manager Mick Foley then scheduled Charlotte to face Banks in which the winner would challenge Bailey for the title at WrestleMania. However, Stephanie decided to keep Charlotte in the championship match at WrestleMania, but allowed Banks the opportunity to be added to the match if she could defeat Bailey that night, which she did. The following week, Sasha defeated Charlotte's ally Dana Brooke, whom Charlotte had ordered to take out Sasha. Charlotte then fired and insulted Brooke, who attacked Charlotte in retaliation. Nia Jax was also given the opportunity to challenge for the championship at WrestleMania if she could defeat Bailey. However, Jax lost the match, by disqualification as she kept attacking Bailey beyond the referee's five count, but the following week, Jax defeated Bailey in a rematch that was no disqualification, earning her a spot in the championship match at WrestleMania. The following week prior to Raw, the match was turned into a fatal four-way elimination match. On Raw, Bailey and Banks teamed up, and defeated Charlotte and Jax. After the match, Jax laid out her three WrestleMania opponents. On the Royal Rumble pre-show, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defeated Cesaro and Sheamus to win the Raw Tag Team Championship. Cesaro and Sheamus invoked their rematch, but lost due to interference from Enzo Amore and Big Cass. On the February 20th episode of Raw, Enzo and Cass defeated Cesaro and Sheamus to receive a tag title match against Gallows and Anderson at Fast Lane, where Gallows and Anderson retained the titles. A rematch occurred the following night on Raw, where Cesaro and Sheamus got involved, costing Enzo and Cass the titles. Later on, Raw general manager Mick Foley scheduled Cesaro and Sheamus to face Enzo and Cass on the next episode, with the winners going on to challenge Gallows and Anderson for the titles at WrestleMania 33. However, during that match, Gallows and Anderson attacked both teams, causing a double disqualification. Foley then scheduled Gallows and Anderson to defend the tag team titles against both teams at WrestleMania in a triple threat match. The following week, Raw Commissioner Stephanie McMahon fired Foley and in opposition to his decision due to his relationship with Cesaro and Sheamus, she scheduled them to face Gallows, Anderson, Enzo, and Cass in a 2-on-4 handicap match, with the stipulation being that if Cesaro and Sheamus were to lose, they would be out of the WrestleMania match, but Cesaro and Sheamus retained their spot in the triple threat match. Backstage the following week, Gallows and Anderson attacked Cesaro and Sheamus with a ladder. In the ring, Gallows and Anderson attempted to attack Enzo and Cass, but Cesaro and Sheamus retaliated and attacked them with a ladder. All three teams brawled and Gallows and Anderson were the last standing. The WrestleMania match was then turned into a triple threat ladder match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. At Elimination Chamber, Naomi defeated Alexa Bliss to win the SmackDown Women's Championship but a legit injury forced her to relinquish the title. Bliss then insisted that since Naomi could not face her for a rematch, she should be awarded the title. Instead, SmackDown general manager Daniel Bryan scheduled her to face Becky Lynch for the vacant title, which Bliss won. On the March 7th episode of SmackDown, Becky, Natalia, and even Bliss Zali Mickey James all demanded to challenge the SmackDown Women's Champion at WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan decided that Bliss would have the chance to prove her claim of being the greatest female on the roster, as she would be defending the title against all available female SmackDown wrestlers at WrestleMania, much to the dismay of the champion. In a subsequent tag team match pitting Bliss and James against Lynch and Natalia, both Natalia and Lynch turned against their respective partners the following week. Lynch defeated Natalia. After the match, both were attacked by Carmella. Later that night, James defeated Bliss. 
On the March 21st episode, Natalia interfered in a match between Lynch and Carmella. In the ensuing brawl also involving James and Bliss, Bliss remained the last woman standing. On the final SmackDown before WrestleMania, Naomi returned, attacked all women, and confirmed that she would be in the match at WrestleMania, making it a six-pack challenge. At Elimination Chamber, during the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match, as Baron Corbin had a stare down with The Miz. Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose eliminated Corbin with a roll-up pin. An enraged Corbin attacked Ambrose, and executed the end of days on him before he left the chamber, which allowed Miz to eliminate Ambrose. On the following SmackDown, Ambrose wanted to exact revenge on Corbin, however, he was attacked by Corbin just as Ambrose made his entrance for his match against James Ellsworth. Ambrose and Corbin then participated in the WWE Championship No. 1 Contenders Battle Royal, where Ambrose eliminated Corbin. Corbin again attacked Ambrose with the end of days and Ambrose was eventually eliminated from the match. Ambrose called out Corbin over the next couple of weeks. Corbin attacked Ambrose backstage and proclaimed his desire to take the Intercontinental Championship from Ambrose. On the March 14th episode, Corbin formally challenged Ambrose for the title at WrestleMania 33. The following week, during Corbin's match against Randy Orton, Ambrose caused a distraction and cost Corbin his match, before accepting Corbin's challenge, and executed dirty deeds on him. The match was moved to the kickoff pre-show. At Fast Lane, Neville retained the WWE Cruiserweight Championship, by defeating Gentleman Jack Gallagher. The following night on Raw, Neville again retained his championship against Rich Swan in Swan's rematch from the Royal Rumble. After the match, Neville said there was no one left in the cruiserweight division that could compete with him. Austin Aries, who had been out of action due to injury, disagreed and attacked Neville, insinuating his desire to challenge Neville for the title. On the March 13 episode of Raw, it was revealed that a fatal five-way elimination match between Aries, TJ Perkins, Tony Nese, Akira Tozawa, and the Brian Kendrick was scheduled for the following night on 205 Live to determine the number one contender for Neville at WrestleMania 33, which was won by Aries, and the match was scheduled for the kickoff pre-show. The two traded barbs over the next couple of weeks, and on the final 205 Live before WrestleMania, Neville attacked Aries and retreated before Aries could counterattack. On the March 7th episode of SmackDown, Mojo Rawley became the first wrestler to announce his participation in the fourth annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Afterwards on Talking Smack, Apollo Crews announced that he would be in the match. On the March 13 episode of Raw, after plans for a potential match with Shaquille O'Neal fell through, it was revealed that Big Show would be part of the Battle Royal. The following week, SmackDown's Kurt Hawkins confirmed his participation. On the March 27 episode of Raw, Braun Strowman, The Golden Truth, The Shining Stars, Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, and Jinder Mahal were confirmed for the Battle Royal. Later in the night, Sami Zayn defeated Kevin Owens in a no disqualification match to qualify for the Battle Royal. It was then confirmed that the match was scheduled for the kickoff pre show. On the March 28 episode of SmackDown, Heath Slater, Rhino, American Alpha, Breeze Ango, Dolph Ziegler, and SmackDown Tag Team Champions The Usos were confirmed for the match. On March 30th, Mark Henry was confirmed for the Battle Royal, as well as NXT's Tian Bing, who was WWE's first Chinese recruit. On April 1st, NXT's Killian Dane was added to the match. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like